but so is acting actually. And and, and right now, um, acting is um, is like has been my main focus for the past five six years. Um, and then we started this group four years ago. So I mean, I, I wouldn't live without any of the two things. So it, it's a mix. Yeah. And it helps us actually. It's kind of cool because for me, acting and singing it comes from the same spot in the body. It's like it's the same energy. So it's it's helping to to do both. Yeah, it makes it all better, hopefully. For you, I I, I agree. It's a mix of that. But uh, but I started out as a singer and a musician as when I was 16 years old. I had a boy band called C21, and we traveled around. Uh, the world actually. Um, so music was my my ignition, and I, I probably would say today music is my priority. But I think it's important to say that that we didn't actually start this group uh, saying we want to make pop music right now. We we started four years ago because we were all at places in our lives where we felt like we needed something different, or something more than than just looking ourselves in the mirror. Because that's, I mean, that's a lot of the work we do. It's only about us and it, with our, with the business, and, and always getting a new job, and always like being the best you can, the best version of yourself and stuff like that. And and, and I think that we were just like, this is the time to kind of change that and do something that could do good for other people. I think being competing, I mean, height look similar for the same roles in films or TVs? No, no, not really. really. No, no, actually, no. no. I thought you might maybe not met on a casting and then thought, okay, let's start a band. Start fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, actually, we met in a, in a show. Actually, I met Johannes in one show in 2008 and Sarn in 2010, I guess. Okay. So we, we met in the business. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take some questions from the floor. Alistair, please. Stand. Hello. Hi guys, Alistair Birch from SBS Radio in Hi. Australia. Um, Johannes, I understand you worked on a Disney show. Now, uh, the Icelandic singer, uh, a great issue, told us about working for Disney. Um, how is it different working for such a well-known, renowned organization such as that? Um, you mean different from doing other productions? Yeah. Um, well, I've always loved Disney and I actually came to get a really great relationship with the people from Disney theatrical group um, in, in New York who were a big part of... I did Aladdin in, in Copenhagen, which was, was the first production in Europe. And um, it, it was really just... I mean, they want to they wanna know everything that's going on with their material, which is... I think a really clever move because then they can always do it the right way. And when they are um, like they are, and they're so nice to work with, it, it's just a, a joy, really. Yeah. And I love Disney. More questions? So, guys, how is it to be so close to Sweden and have you been in here working? I mean, we're neighbors basically, so uh, yeah. musically. I've actually been going to Stockholm and other Swedish uh, cities for 15 years to write music with Swedish uh, songwriters. So Stockholm is one of my favorite cities. Uh, I think it's it's on the level of uh, London and New York for me. I love coming here. I love the vibe and the, the people and there's so much beauty here. Um, yeah, I really like it. Yeah, actually for me it's the first time. So it's a great first impression, I must say. Also, you managed to do great weather and stuff. <laughs> Good. When, when you listen to music yourself, some producing, writing, you know, is Sweden one of those countries you look a little extra to, considering, you know... I think you have a, an amazing uh, pop uh, tradition. Uh, as a songwriter, I'm so very uh, inspired by your pop writers. And I love the fact that you, that you really find pop credible. In, in Denmark, it, it can be credible, but it, it's, it's sometimes pop can be something you look down on in a way. But the, in, in Sweden, you really nourish it and, and you know respect it uh, as a craft, um, and and I love that. Yeah, Max Martin is obviously one of the, the famous ones, but uh, there's so many gifted people here. You've been releasing stuff. So what is the future for you guys after Eurovision? What are your aims and goals? What would you like to do? Is it more music or is it more acting? Actually, we've been asked that a couple of times now, but the Eurovision has just been so 
it's such a big part of our lives and careers right now, so we didn't have time to think about what comes next, actually. Yeah, and, and the thing is that since we, because we were in the, a Danish local competition, like the big Eurovision, but just for 10 acts in Denmark, and, and um, when we were in that, uh, in that show, or in that uh, competition, since then, since we won that Danish competition, and, and until now, we've all had uh, so much to do, and I've been working on a show, and, and the, the guys have been working on other stuff as well, so, I mean, and that's what we do with this band, because it's so... Charity work is such a big part of, of the group, and so we also have to have other jobs aside from, from, the, from the group, which is really nice, because we, we like that, and it's a good mix, it gives us something, and it gives us something to write songs about as well, and um, so it's a matter of many things, including time. Yeah, and we, we never expected actually to win the Danish competition, so <laughs> um, we, we needed to get all the preparations done and, and find the, the time to do that, so... Yeah. Well, that's, that's your management's problem to get you three together. Is to try to fit some <laughs> rehearsals and press. A lot of calendar work there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Where's just the back there? Black t shirt, please. Hello, Lajos X. It's JP from Wade International. Uh, you young guys uh, in Denmark had quite some nice history at the Eurovision Song Contest. What are your personal favorites from, from the past at Eurovision and from the Danish side as well? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's kind of a, a good tradition being in, in Sweden. <laughs> we won the two last times, but um, no more about that. <laughs> uh, my, my, my favorite Danish act was, was the Problem Brothers, also Brothers, 2001, wasn't it 2001? Yeah? yeah. Uh, 2000, 2000. 2000, okay, yeah. A wonderful song, great guys, uh, strong vocals, just a beautiful pop tune. Uh, and your, your uh, Loreen, yeah. one of my absolute favorites as well. Oh, the Danish show. Yeah, she yeah, she came and performed in the Danish uh, finals as well. I, I think if we're not talking about Danish acts, the, the one song I remember the most, I think, I don't even remember what her name is. Maybe she's from Greece. Um, you are the one, you're mine, I'm the one. Elena Paparizou. Yeah, I love that song. I heard that all summer long <laughs> that year. Greek, Swedish girl. Nice. Yeah, more questions? Yes, thanks, Hi guys, another, another question for all three of you this time. Um, you mentioned the charity work, I think you support children. Um, can you tell us a little more about that? And which came first, the social aspect of your band or the music? Yeah, great question. Yeah, um, yeah as, as Johannes touched on, uh, we really gather around the, you know, the urge to do a difference make a difference for other people in this, <laughs> our society in Denmark, but in the world as, as, as a whole. And we find that music is a wonderful tool when you want to create unity and tolerance and understanding, you know, across race, religion, age, you know, nations. And uh, so we had actually started it with that, you know, DNA and philosophy that we wanted to make pop music that had a, had a message to it. And then we started uh, writing songs and uh, and created these very uh, strong relationships with uh, different kinds of organizations that, that helps kids and youngsters that are troubled or vulnerable. Because we have our own personal histories as well. We have not just been a success all our lives. We've, we've, we've been struggling uh, in our youth as well. So we know about being in this dark place in life and how much it, it matters when we reach out and get some help from loving people around us. Yeah, actually that's, that's kind of a weird thing. We decided to make a, a group, a pop group, but instead of starting singing, we started talking. So we talked a lot the first times and just shared our personal histories. We, we knew most of it in forehand because we know each other from before. Uh, yeah, and then we just decided to write music about that because when you write music, you want to have something that means something to you. And we just started with ourselves. Yeah. Sounds like the slogan "Come Together" fits pretty well on you. It really does. <laughs> when, when we found out that that was the theme, we were like, "Our song could have been called." <laughs> so you, you obviously think that it's important for well-known people, well-known faces, to try to do some difference in the world. It is important if it if it means something and if it makes sense for you to do that. I, I don't feel personally that all actors or all singers. Uh, have to do it necessarily. I think that if you have it inside you, 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 I mean, you can't do anything else but get it out. Then 
then you should do it. And, and I do feel that to some extent that, that you do have a, a responsibility when you have a platform and when you are someone people look up to. Yeah. And actually we had the urge, because as Soren said, our history, for example, I, I was uh, the fat kid in school. I was bullied a lot and had a very low self-esteem and stuff. So I find it so important to tell these small children that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, if you think like that. Because when you're 12 and you get bullied and you're fat and you're singing a church choir, which is not cool in Denmark when you're fat and get bullied, uh, it can seem so, so dark. And to see the light is almost impossible. But when we sing for children or talk with children that have the same problems, and, and we can see in their eyes that they're like, ah, oh, if those guys can do it, I can. It's just, yeah, there we have the song. And that fits your title of the song as well. Yeah. It does, and, and, and basically it's about everyone on this, on this earth can be a lighthouse, can be soldiers of love. So we are not kind of, you know, we don't think that we are the only ones having that opportunity or a gift or talent. Everyone of us in this room has the ability to make a change in another, pe another person's life. Just a small, uh, it can make a huge impact if we meet each other with love and respect and tolerance. We come a long way by doing that. Perfect. Questions? So, ladies and gentlemen, Lighthouse 10. Yeah. It's time for a photo session.